This is a telescope. Don't believe me? Let me tell you the story of Sophia, NASA's newly retired airborne observatory. When people think of telescopes, their minds usually go to two places, the ground and space. There are countless incredible ground-based telescopes around the world, and space telescopes like Hubble and JWST are household names. But many people don't even know that airborne telescopes exist. SOFIA, the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, was all housed right here on this plane. It was a partnership between NASA and the German Aerospace Center that lasted for two decades. Aboard, they have a full science laboratory, an outreach center, and the most important part, a 2.7 meter telescope. From 2010 to 2022, SOFIA flew around the globe, capturing astronomy data that would have been impossible to collect with a ground-based telescope. The telescope aboard SOFIA was designed to look at a large swath of infrared wavelengths, and was equipped with instruments that were able to observe near, mid, and far infrared light. Because of the way that these wavelengths get scattered in our atmosphere due to greenhouse gases like water vapor, we're not able to observe most of infrared light from the ground, which is where the airplane part of this observatory comes in. During observations, SOFIA would fly at altitudes of 38 to 45,000 feet for up to nine hours in order to get above 99% of the atmosphere's water vapor for crystal clear infrared observations. Operated by NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center and NASA's Ames Research Center, SOFIA did some incredible science during its 12 years and 291 flights. SOFIA was retired in 2022 and made its last flight here to the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona. There really wasn't any other museums that could really take on SOFIA. The Smithsonian doesn't have the indoor space for an aircraft of that size, you know, so they always get the first right of refusal with a lot of these NASA objects. I mean, we have a lot of outdoor space, and it's also a good environment for aircraft. It doesn't rain as much. And also, we're a great location for SOFIA because we already have a large collection of NASA aircraft. While a lot of people are celebrating its accomplishments and some wishing that the mission could have gone just a little bit longer, a lot of other people are wondering why it wasn't retired years ago. Several times throughout the last 10 years or so, budget decisions have threatened to shut down SOFIA. None actually did until this past year, of course, but why was its funding so debated? Did SOFIA's research earn the price tag? Well, let's start with the basics, the plane. If you're comparing SOFIA to a ground-based telescope, it's pretty clear from the get-go there's going to be a higher cost to operate SOFIA. But since ground-based infrared observations are so difficult, it's not a great comparison anyway. When you put SOFIA up against a space telescope, though, the Airborne Observatory definitely wins. An Ariane 5 rocket, which launched JWST and the Herschel Space Observatory, among other things, costs between 150 and 200 million US dollars per launch. In comparison, the jet fuel needed for one flight of SOFIA, working with 2022 numbers, would be somewhere between 55 and 92,000 per night. Even after 291 flights and building in a lot of room, the total fuel cost couldn't exceed $30 million. Point Sophia. Granted, Sophia costs a lot more than the jet fuel it was burning. For every flight, there needed to be a specially trained crew, several scientists, and a telescope operator on board. There's also the cost of doing maintenance and upgrades, and some of this maintenance is the same type that would be done to a commercial airliner to ensure safety. But there's also specialized and often very expensive maintenance done on the telescope and instruments. Before it was retired, NASA was budgeting about $85 million per year to keep the SOFIA mission going. To compare, Hubble has cost somewhere between 90 and $99 million per year since 2010. These numbers are shockingly similar and especially when you take into account that SOFIA's total observation time is nearly a quarter of what Hubble can do in just a year, there's no way that SOFIA wins this one. I did mention maintenance though, and that's an area where SOFIA's got a big advantage over space telescopes. Because SOFIA returns to us after each flight, scientists are constantly able to update instruments, fix problems, and even swap out instruments for specialized projects. For example, astronomers were able to find helium hydride with the help of a specialized instrument that was mounted to SOFIA. Helium hydride is the first type of molecule formed in the early universe that had been theorized to exist, but never found, until SOFIA found it. Even if scientists had determined where to look using a space telescope, they wouldn't have been able to actually make the discovery without swapping in that equipment. That's a big pro for Team SOFIA. Another pro? It's a plane. 
Sophia is able to fly anywhere in the world in order to get to the perfect places to observe things like transient events, something that ground-based telescopes simply can't do. For example, in 2011 and 2015, Sophia was able to get to exactly the right spot to see Pluto occultations. During this occultation, Pluto moved in front of a faraway star, casting a small, faint, and fast-moving shadow on Earth. Positioning Sophia directly in that shadow allowed astronomers to collect data on the structure and density of Pluto's atmosphere, and that project assisted New Horizons that arrived at Pluto soon after. Sophia made other scientific discoveries too, like finding out that dwarf planet Ceres might not be made of the stuff we thought it was, but rather its true makeup is being covered by a thick layer of silicate-rich dust. Sophia also found out that stellar winds from newborn stars can prevent other stars from forming around them, which we thought supernovae were responsible for, but apparently aren't. Because when we looked at the Orion Nebula with Sophia, that wasn't the case. I know these aren't the flashiest discoveries. They're not making the news the way an Artemis I launch or a black hole image would. But that doesn't mean they aren't important, especially to the astronomers whose work revolves around the research that Sophia's done. Evaluating Sophia's scientific yield is a difficult thing to do because it requires us to figure out how we define important science. Important science can't only be the big picture stuff because all those things are built on the smaller discoveries that come before them. Do we measure it by the amount of scientific papers written on the data? Because if you're doing that, Hubble's got everyone beat by miles, but I also don't think that's a great metric. If you define good science as done to further public knowledge and interest, Sophia may be a winner. From the beginning of the program, outreach has been a part of the Sophia mission. The Airborne Astronomy Ambassadors program would invite dozens of K-12 teachers, science and museum educators, and public outreach specialists aboard to experience a Sophia flight to tell their students about. The Ambassadors program also specifically targeted educators for groups that may be underserved by normal science education programs. And Sophia's outreach isn't done yet. With its current status of it being displayed outdoors, it does limit what we can do for display purposes as well as, you know, certain types of uh, interpretation. The plan is to have the aircraft open to the public occasionally. The mirror is being taken out by the German Space Agency and it's going to go back to a museum over there. The telescope's going to stay in the air, at least the telescope frame and the dummy mirror and all that, and all that is supposed to be staying inside the aircraft. We will open up the aircraft for the general public on specific days, especially during our busy seasons. So how do you weigh the value of a program like that, something that will without a doubt inspire the next generation of scientists, against something like a paper? I don't know. And honestly, I don't know how worth it Sophia was. That's something you have to decide for yourself. What I do know, though, is that this telescope in a plane is pretty freaking cool. <laughs>